John here from No Joke NHL, here with our daily NHL playoff betting report. Today is May the 3rd, 19, 2013. Uh, make sure I get that right, right off the bat. And uh, this is the uh, recap from the games last night. I'll be back at about 3 Eastern, maybe a little later as I have an appointment this afternoon. But I should have that report up by 4 o'clock Eastern for... Uh, tonight's games and any plays we have, although the early look at the card is really, um, you know, between the Pittsburgh and Chicago series with those prohibitive favorites there, probably not much going on, but nonetheless we'll give a rundown of what's, uh, what's happening and uh, maybe look at some totals for that afternoon. But let's get to last night's action. Uh, four games on the card last night, and uh, the first game that went off was the Ottawa Senators who beat the Montreal Canadiens four ga uh, four to two. Um, Montreal dominated the offensive action to say the least, uh, fifty shots on goal to thirty one for Ottawa here, um, and uh, pretty much they outshot uh, they, they outshot Ottawa in every period except for the third in which Ottawa outshot them twelve to nine. Of course, that's when Ottawa did most of their damage, scoring three goals and taking control of this game. Uh, bad news for the Montreal Canadiens in the sense that Eric Carlson coming back from a uh, severed Achilles or partially severed Achilles uh, played the most time on the ice last night and was completely dominant offensively. Five shots on goal, uh, a total of 12 offensive attempts. He had six attempts blocked and then one missed shot. So uh, he appears to be completely all the way back from that injury. So you're really not going to get any slowdown from him. And, of course, the other injured player from uh, Ottawa this year who came back in time for the playoffs, uh, Craig Anderson, was absolutely phenomenal, uh, giving up only two goals out of 50 shots on goal. Uh, so kudos to him, the number one star from that game. And, like I said, Eric Carlson, the other key uh, addition as the Ottawa Senators come back to the playoffs. So um, the, 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 bright, the bright star for uh, Canadians, of course, was Subban, who, uh, as a defenseman as well, had seven shots on goal, two blocked attempts, and no misses. Uh, so that you know, he, he certainly was doing his part on the ice. And there were several Canadians with a lot of shots, uh, eight shots for Brendan Gallagher, uh, five for Thomas Pl Placonic, uh, five for uh, Rene Bork. So, uh, you know, definitely a lot of offensive chances for the Canadians. Like I said, Craig Anderson was up to the task to shed them all away. Uh, so, you know, the Canadians really have to find another gear here. As like I said, I mean, if you were counting on Ottawa being a little under the weather still from their injuries or, uh, you know, something like that, that doesn't appear to happen here. Uh, or it doesn't appear to be happening here. As like I said, Carlson completely dominant last night. Uh, you know, like I said, 29 minutes on the ice, the most out of any player from both sides. And so with that, uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, probably more of the same there unless the Canadians can find another gear and Carey Price can find his confidence. Third period for Carey Price, uh, 12 shots faced and gives up three goals and that was the difference for the game. Uh, moving on to Washington DC, we had the Washington Capitals taking a one nothing lead in their series on the New York Rangers with a 3-1 victory. Uh, Rangers getting the first goal after the Caps dominated the, probably the first 10 minutes of the uh, action, uh, putting uh, out shooting them 9 to nothing at one point. And uh, Hagelin comes around the, the net and glances one off of Erskine's skate. And uh, it, you know, lo and behold, it's one nothing New York Rangers. Shut the Verizon Center crowd up and uh, you know, had everybody thinking. And then, of course, the Capitals were able to tie it up. Rangers with a key 5-on-3 in the second period, almost four minutes of 5-on-3 action in which they couldn't convert. Holpe in the defense holds them out of the net. And then the Capitals uh, were able to get two in uh, really quick bang-bang goals in the second period, and then there was no, no scoring in the third. So the Capitals pretty much came as advertised, and really the Rangers did as well. They, they you know, the, the, the Rangers uh, outshot the Capitals 36 to 30, and so uh, really nothing wrong with the play of either one of these uh, teams. Like I said, it was probably the two quick goals that probably deflated the Rangers a little bit, but then again, they still had the whole third period to overcome that, and they just weren't able to. Um, Braden Holpe, uh, again, as advertised, we look at just this guy's playoff work, uh, you know, goals against and, uh, you know, and, and, and how he, you know, handles it in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And, uh, you know, this guy is on his way to being a superstar right now. Um, 
Longfist, like I said, was 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 pretty pretty admirable in goal, except for the you know the two quick goals that they had. Uh, one was a defensive breakdown in which they got kind of a cherry picking uh, breakaway goal, and uh, you know he was able to get through get through uh, underneath uh, Longfist's arm to put uh, give them a two one lead, and then Shamara was able to get that other goal within the next minute. So we have the Capitals up one nothing. Uh, like I said, everybody's excited in D.C. about that. Ranger fans shaking their heads, you know, for what could have been with the five on three that wasn't converted, and you know, a couple plays here and there. But uh, you know, definitely going to be a tight checking series. I can't say the Caps are going to run away with this, but you know, getting off to a one nothing start like that, um, and, you know, in front of the home crowd, certainly going to do a lot to boost their confidence. Um, pretty, pretty uh, even effort for both squads. Not many people, uh, you know, with a ton of shots on goal, uh, except for Rick Nash, who absolutely came as advertised. Eight shots on goal, five attempts blocked, and then three missed shots. So, uh, 16 offensive attempts at the net for Rick Nash, and so uh, nobody can really say anything about him not coming to play. Uh, Ovechkin with five shots on goal, uh, three three attempts blocked, and of course. He had a goal and an assist as well uh, to help lead the Capitals. So, uh, very good series, very entertaining. This one gets back on the ice Saturday at 12.30 Eastern. Uh, the next game on the board, the St. Louis Blues and the Los Angeles Kings. Um, and the, the Blues uh, down one nothing going into the third period. Um, it were, were able to put two on the board, including one with 51 seconds left in regulation to uh, seal the deal here. Um, I bought in at a, li a live in-game play, taking St. Louis minus a half goal in regulation after the first period uh, at a juicy plus 312, and uh, that cashes for us. I kind of half contemplated going in at the end of the second period and taking the same thing because we were still in the same boat. Uh, I mean, kind of a crazy line. After after 20 minutes of play, they hang a line 3-1 uh, to one to just win the game in regulation. I mean, come on. You're going to put in a tying goal and then get one more in 40 more minutes of hockey. So, you know, I mean, I'm not saying the Kings were guaranteed to be shut out, but, you know, that that, that scenario itself, I, it wasn't even really about the teams. Uh, it was just really about that line and the scenario that was going on. Like I said, you know, they were a plus 170 in regulation, uh, or, or I'm, I'm sorry, plus 170 on the money line after one period, and then you're going to hang a 312, plus 312 on there. So uh, definitely jumped on that, and, uh, and and congrats to everybody else that jumped on that. It was like it was a silly line, as several people tweeted, including Brax. Uh, and so ho hopefully you were able to jump on that, even if it, you know, like I said, it, it fell pretty quick from the plus 312. Within a couple minutes, it was down to plus 283. Um, yeah, I don't know if that was on my word. I sincerely doubt it, uh, you know, because if I'm able to control markets from the, my basement in Baltimore, then, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, uh, so, so we, we were able to cash there. Of course, we had blues on the money line. Um, and so, you know, so, so we did well there. The Washington Capitals, we also had the, them on the money line, and we also had them uh, minus one and a half. And uh, so, so, so that was able to work out well. Uh, even though we had to sweat that whole uh, third period and several chances in front of the capital net uh, at the end of regulation to get that cash, so uh, so so it's the series now is uh, two nothing Blues and the Kings really up against it as they go to L.A. for the next two games. So um, you know, like I said, we're, we're sitting real real nice on our Blues uh, series future here and. Um, so things th things are looking pretty well. It's a really tight game. Blues really fortunate to come out with the victory here. But now, like I said, with the Kings down two nothing, uh, certainly are up against it. In uh, you know winning this series, have to take four out of the next six games. Uh, I'm sorry, four out of the next five games. Excuse me, uh, in, in order to do this. So uh, on to the next one. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks losing in overtime to the Detroit Red Wings five to four. Uh, the Red Wings up three to one at the end of two, and then put an early fourth or early third period tally to make it four to one, and then the Ducks come storming back and get three unanswered to force the overtime. Uh, they took a bad penalty at the end of regulation, and that power play carried over, and the Red Wings were able to convert uh, early in that first overtime period to take this one. Uh, Although the Red Wings certainly had to be shaking their heads as to you know what the barrage that they faced at the end of that 
third period in regulation. So this series now tied at 1-1, and uh, you know, frankly, like I said, I don't know what happened with the Ducks. Got off to a slow start. Uh, you, you know, what, what, whatever it was, this game, uh, this game was on late, and I was, uh, I was not watching it as closely as I watched the other games. I'm gonna have to review the tape and look at this before I make any decisions about the next uh, game three coming up in Detroit, but. Uh, you know, de definitely, uh, you know, both teams, 32 shots on goal. Um, the goalies, uh, you know, Jimmy Howard, outstanding, except for that third period where he gives up three goals and on 11 shots faced. Hiller, uh, Hiller a little shaky in the first period, giving up two goals on eight shots, but then was uh, respectable two for the next 20. So, uh, you know, I mean, both goalies, uh, you know, get, gave up some goals that probably they wished they could have back. Um, the offensive attempts for Anaheim, 32 shots on goal, 24 attempts blocked, 13 missed shots. So several, you know, so what's that, 56, 69 offensive attempts for them versus uh, 48, 50, uh, yeah, 61 for the Detroit Red Wings uh, with the game going over. So, so definitely uh, not a lot of defense being played, and you can obviously see in a 5-4 uh, game so this one definitely goes over the total and the, the uh, Detroit Red Wings as an underdog get the victory here so that that brings us to the end for the recap from last night's games so uh, like I said I'll be back at like three or four Eastern this afternoon to talk about tonight's games and then I'm gonna uh, keep the same schedule going on tomorrow's gonna be a little screwy with the Kentucky Derby and everything and uh, the early games so maybe what I'm gonna try to do is a combination report in the morning as we have some uh, you know day games going off Capitol Rangers going off at 12:30 uh, in the afternoon Eastern, so uh, 9:30 Pacific time. So we'll probably do a combination report uh, in the morning. But uh, like I said, I'll have the second half of today's report up around three or four o'clock uh, Eastern, and uh, that brings us to the end of this report. So uh, no joke NHL on Twitter, no joke NHL on YouTube. Tell all your friends, and most importantly, let's make some money.